Hello everyone, welcome to Brenda's Brushstrokes and Bisque Painting Live on Thursday, August 12th at 7 p.m. Central Time. And we will be finishing up our July, Christmas in July box this evening, and which was six sets of ornaments. Um, we have a set of red and green that we will be antiquing, and that's what we're working on tonight. Then we had our blue set that we um, color washed and then dry brushed. And then we had our purple set that we base coated and then dry brushed and painted out in, in areas like on our packages and on our scarves. Um, so that is our three ornaments for um, our July box. Then we are into shipping our August box, which is our large Mako gourd and our dragonfly that we attach to it. And then we did a new background technique using um, saran wrap or plastic wrap, wadded up or crumpled up, and then dipped into two, two colors and then um, squished that around on our gourd for our background color. And then we have silk screens that we made and we will be including this, a little bit of silk screen medium for this project as part of the box for our welcome autumn and then our dragonflies that are scattered throughout our um, gourd and then you also get a piece of rope for your um, stem so that is our August box that shipped this past week um, so that is what we're work we'll be working on starting next week um, Cordy says really everyone nice should have what? Early next week. Um, some went to the post office tonight before we started. Um, so that's. UPS. that's and UPS, we're also using UPS now. So Courtney found a program that where we can use them and it's reasonable. So um, you may see your boxes coming UPS, especially if they're oversized boxes. So you can look forward to that possibly too. Um, so this is our red and green set that we working on we're working on last week we uh, base coated them white and then we painted our christmas green and our holly green i think it was let's see our bright green and our christmas green and then our rust and our red so that looks like that is about number four that we were on um, and you can refer to the our instructions that were in your box and um, the boxes all come with instructions also each set um, had a set of instructions. Um, this was the blue set, or actually the purple set. And on the purple set, I did miss in the after number um, one. Oh, let's see. Miss missed part of the dry brushing on on these purple guys. So after they were base coated, they're purple. They were dry brushed lilac, and then white. Um, so that would be in be in between after number one, and then touch. Then number two would be to touch up your dark purple areas. So that was an error on those. And then we also have the blue set instructions, and then you also had your inventory sheet um, that was included in your box. So we are on number. Get back to where we were here. Our red and green set, and we are on number four which we did number four, we painted the holly Christmas green, so now we are going to paint our broom medium brown. So that's our broom is on our fella here, so I just use foil so I can um, just kind of wad it up and throw it out instead of having to scrape on a tile. So we have our medium brown, and Courtney, would you want to shut the uh, blind behind me because it's kind of like catching in the back of my eye. So we have our medium brown, OS471 medium brown. So let's see, looks like we got all you guys joining us tonight here. So hello everyone. Um, looks like a couple of you have already got your um, boxes. So, um, so Gloria asked if we will be ever doing, doing classes on fashion hues. Um, our boxes are based on non-fire techniques, basically using different acrylics and um, Sometimes a few other little things. We will probably not be using fashion hues on the subscription boxes. Um, just because there would be a whole extra expense for you guys for um, a whole new set of paints. 
However, um, we are working on setting up a certification at the classroom, either come spring or come fall. And then hopefully I will be able to do separate videos occasionally that are just for uh, painting with the fashion hues. And maybe we will do the whole, um, it'll be like a, the BIS box, but not an actual subscription. It'll just be like a one or two, two time thing. Um, like you could just purchase that box, kind of like what we want to do with the mosaic. Um, the mosaic, it'll be more like a kit where you can purchase the kit and then you'll have access to a video. Um, so we'll probably be doing fashion hues that way. It's kind of like how we're going to do our mosaic stained glass um, on a piece. It'll be a kit that you can purchase with a video and instructions and everything and um, have technical support. So but we're working on that yet. Courtney's got to do some um, cert research on things and then we're also setting up. Huh? Courtney needs to call herself. <laughs> yeah, well, so does Brenda. And then we are working with um, a fashion who's instructor to have, like I said, a certification class. So I'm certified before I start actually um, offering that type of a kit. So we're looking forward to that, though. And um, it, it's it's coming. But, you know, we're, we're, our, we're only two years old at this, and we're, we're growing every day, actually. So um, we, we hope to do it at some time. So... That's great. So we're going to go back to our medium brown. So I have OS471 medium brown, and we're just going to put a little pile of that on our um, palette here. And my paint's dried up. So I have to, I just use a ball stylus to clean out that hole when that does that. And we'll get a little pile of our medium brown. And then because our little broom is really small, I'm just going to use a liner. I believe this is my. Um, this is a 4585-50 liner, and I'm going to dip it in water first to prime it and then pat it out onto my paper towel to get the water out. That helps um, keep the paint from getting up in the ferrule and then stuck in the middle of your brush bristles as well. Then when I load my liner, I like to draw that through the pile of paint and give it a turn, and that will load that paint up into that liner so it goes further. And then when I'm painting my um, piece now, because we're, we want nice straight um, broom lines, I like to rest my piece in my hand, which is rested solidly on the table. And then I like to rest my painting hand on my piece, so I have a nice steady line. And then just kind of outline our broom handle here. Um, and, and other people can have different ways of doing things, and there's nothing wrong with that. This is just what I do and what works for me, and um, do what works for you. So we're just going to line out our little room handle here on the end, and then fill that in. Um, Cordy says, what happened to my arm again? It got whacked between the mold and the pouring table a couple times last week. Um, it's actually looking really good. I, I didn't whack it this week at all, so... Um, well, the weekend we might this weekend. Um, well, hopefully after this weekend we don't have that problem because we're emptying out my garage on, I think Friday and Saturday, and then we will be um, insulating it and putting um, paneling on the walls, and then kind of rearranging things so that there's more room in there for the pouring table and getting it ready for winter, so I don't have to move it back into the dining room. Um, so I can just be more efficient out there with pouring. Um, so hopefully after Tuesday, that's all situated and we're ready to rock and roll out there. Um, but sometimes when you're handling those um, bigger molds, it's, that still can happen just because you're um, handling them with your kind of bear hugging them to move them around. So... It's just that there's not a whole lot of room right now between the pouring table and the rack that I put the greenware on. And then you get a big mold in your arms and stuff tends to get in the way and it's usually the arm that gets in the way. Um, so we're just painting out our broom handle here with the medium brown, just going around our uh, mittens and our coat and our scarf and all that little good good stuff. Um, so this part, this part's really just like coloring in a coloring book because you kind of have your lines from your piece 
and you just want to fill, fill, fill it in, which basically I'm just filling in the shape of the broom. Um, so this afternoon, well, this morning, Cordy was actually in Shano, and well, we took my car to the shop to get brakes done on it, and um, we left it left it there, and I came back with her in case it wasn't done by 5 to get here so that I could make sure I was live for you guys. Um, so while I was here, I um, painted our September box, um, which we will show have a little show and tell at the end. And look at there, I have my finger in the brown, so now I got brown all over my white. But that's not too serious because it's not dry brush, so we can just paint it white again and cover it back up. Um, so we can show you the two pieces for your September box that are painted. Um, Cordy says, do you guys think you know what it is? I know there's some pretty pretty close guesses. Um, it's definitely Donna's Molds and it's definitely Halloween. And then we have quite a few extras that you will be able to add um, to this box, just because it's what it is. And then the pieces that I have painted, they, um, they're they not quite done, they're not sealed. And then one piece needs a little ribbon string on it like with a bow and then um, some glitter. And Courtney didn't have glitter here, she took it all to the classroom, so. Not a crafter. She says she's not a crafter, so she took it all to the craft. To Jason the classroom. Oh, Jason, don't allow glitter. I don't like glitter. Well, I have a glitter bomb. I don't think we want sawdust on them. We don't want man glitter. <laughs> um, so other than that, the the they're done. Um, I'm not a hundred percent satisfied with the eyes, but I'll work on them on on the next one. But they're okay. They they look okay. Um, I just did them basically the way we do our. The eye video that I did, but I added eyelashes, so. Um, but I'll work on that a little bit more. So I need a little more brown here. Um, but they're ready to show you guys. And then next week we will be having an after show. Um, so that at that point we'll be able to show you the extra bis that you can add. Yeah, it's next week already. <laughs> I don't know how we're ever going to, even though the classroom's closed, I don't know how we're going to get everything done that needs to be done. I don't know either. So. I'm just painting out our little broom here, getting it covered good. Using our medium brown. Let's see, next Friday we are going to the Waukesha show. That's next week already, too. Um... I think I forgot to tell you, um, Casey's coming too. Okay. So we have a couple ladies coming along with us, so it should be a fun day. Hopefully, there's a few classes going on that they can maybe um, take while we're getting our supplies and things. Um, I do have the large Noel Christmas tree mold ordered, so we'll be getting that. Um, I'm waiting for a call from HK Enterprises about my. Um, two camel molds, so I haven't heard from her. She was supposed to call me back, so I don't know if she forgot or what. But hopefully they have those. And then we'll put, be putting in an order for um, like supplies like clip lights and tree lights and um, that kind of stuff. Oh, I was just going to say, what about twist lights, Courtney? I have plenty of um, pin lights for the classroom, the large pin lights. They're in a bulk gallon container. Um, but I know we sell a lot of those online, so I don't know if you need those. Okay, so we have our brown outlined really nice and painted in. Nice clean lines. So I will now wash out my liner brush. And then it says to, let's see, what are we going to do? Um, use black to outline our stitching. So let's go to some black OS 476 black and we'll get a drop of black And we don't need much because we're just outlining that kind of making little Stitches on the broom again. I'm going to load my brush By pulling it through my pile and then doing that 
turn between my thumb and index finger and that loads them bristles up really good so your paint you can go a long ways. Um, so now on our broom he's got some I just kind of put a little kind of like the little string that holds your little broom together we just added a little bit of black here and there and I'm just using that 5-0 liner again. And then I did um, the solid line and then the stitching in between. And again, I'm resting that painting hand on my piece. I like, like to rest that on there so it's nice and steady. And then I like to draw it towards me. And then your line can be thick or fat. You just want it one or the other. You don't want it thick in some places and fat in, or skinny in some places. So I'm just kind of making it um, so it's e equal. So it was a little bit skinnier when I started out and then it got thicker. So I'm just going to make it a little bit thicker where it's thinner. And we'll do one more below it. So we've had um, really hot, humid weather here and um, tornadoes in the area um, the last, well, kind of this week, all week. It's been a kind of a rough weather week. We were um, pretty fortunate, but communities around us did have um, tornadoes, so... And they just kind of popped up out of nowhere each day. So I think after today we're supposed to cool off a little bit. I know third, Friday and Saturday is supposed to be really nice and then I think warming up a little bit on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Now I'm going to just put a little bit of stitching in between because the brooms always seem to have a little bit of stitching on them. So we'll just go in between our black lines and give some little dashes that look like stitches. So there we have our black on our broom for our stitching line. I'm going to wash out my brush. And let's see, now it says to paint silver on our square frame. So we need some silver. And we have our UM956, Courtney, UM956, which is our silver, and that needs a good shake, shake always. Huh? Um, so we'll just put that on our foil, and then I'm just going to load that liner up again. I'm just going to keep using my same liner because I have nice, um, that framework here is kind of a small area, and I want a nice straight line on my edges. So I'm just going to run along the edge with my liner, butt it up to his hat. So hopefully my car is um, ready tomorrow and all it needed was brakes in the front. Um, which I'm guessing that's all it was because it was just making a little grinding when I come up to the stop sign. So hopefully it won't be too expensive of a deal. So is anyone going to the Waukesha show next um, Friday? We're going to be there at 10 o'clock, hopefully, probably the whole day. It took the whole day last year, so or not last year, the year before. By the time you look around and talk to people and collect your purchases, and the day is over before you know it. We're just lining out our frame work on our piece here with our silver. 
You could use gold or whatever you want to. You could even use a, a color if you wanted to do green or whatever. Um, you can always feel free to do change anything up. Um, we just paint on camera what was um, how the samples were painted. And it seems like a lot of you actually paint the, the same way. Because a lot of the pictures that are shared are, are the same way, the way the instructions were. So that's nice to see. And that they must be helpful. We're just lining out our little frame here. Um, so this is actually a lot of how um, when I learned back in the 80s, like things were painted out and antiqued. Um, that's that and a lot of underglazing was done and then glazed over that after it was fired the first time so I think a lot of the paint your own pottery places do the um, the glazes where you then you just come back and pick up your piece later Lining out the silver here. Let's see, when is the next after show sale, Paula says. It's going to be next Thursday night after we get done, so about 8.30. <coughs> Excuse me, I have to take a drink. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so it'll be after our painting show next Thursday. Um, and Courtney is... Um, are you going to let them list like right on the comments again, or are they going to have to go to the website? Okay. She says she's not sure, you guys. Um, so it'll be next Thursday anyway. And I have um, the extra bisque that kind of goes with with the boxes she's got that sample and then I have other bits that I had or greenware I had been pouring um, that we didn't even get to last time um, so we'll be doing that too I know there's um, Christmas ornaments um, some ghosts I'm trying to think what we have um, a new Donna's little basket for the inserts it's a three inch tall basket with a oval, it's an oval basket with a lid on it excuse me a lid on it um, we kind of didn't get the, the inserts, so maybe she'll show those again. I'm not sure. Um, some hand-in-hand -hand scarecrows and hand-in-hand -hand ghosts. Um, we talked about um, glitter today, so I'm not sure if we'll be ordering glitter or not. Well, we have to do that tonight when we get done um, painting, because we have to get our order in to pick up at Waukesha. So we'll see what we can... What other little goodies we might have to offer... Um, we will not go as late as we did last time. We'll just um, plan on how long, an hour, Courtney, or an hour and a half? Um, we'll have Connie to help. Too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and we're going to have a helper writing down the name, so that should help, too. Even though we're not going to go till midnight, we'll... Um... Sorry, Gail. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Gail. <sighs> but we should get through a lot of stuff anyway, so we'll have a lot. It's all kind of all... Pretty much fall themed, I guess I would say. I mean, like I said, there are some Christmas ornaments and things too, so. Okay, so we have our silver done, and I just want to go back and make sure wherever it dried, if it needs a second coat. And it's on the frame, the frame part of the ornament here. And let's see, did I do the back too? Okay, the back I did with gold, so we got to do the other one here. Um, so we're just lining the silver out on both of them. And I do like to do the whole process so you guys can see that, you know, it's not a fast process and because a lot of you are new and um, it's just a good thing. 
Courtney said we had a comment or question for Gail. No, I don't know. My line's still Can you see it? Oh my, okay, so Gail says my lines start out nice and thin and then they get fatter as I go along. Is there a trick to using the liner to get straight lines? So I usually like to, um, you can wash your brush out if you notice after a while it's getting too thick, but a lot of times I will take my brush and um, dip it into water and get a drop of water and then mix it into my little paint, um, especially when I'm doing eyes. I didn't do it so much with the silver um, tonight just because it's a little, little wider, but if you can add a drop of water to that paint or else your thin-in shade, we, um, you guys got thin-in shade in your box. I think two months ago, you can add a drop of that to your um, paint to thin it a little bit, and that will help um, that paint just flow better off of your um, brush. Um, and sometimes with the liner, you just have to wash it out every once in a while. You um, That'll help too. So hopefully that helps answer that question. Um, especially with eyes, though, I'll add that little drop of water um, just to thin that paint just a little bit. Um, the metallics tend to be a little bit um, different, so I don't always add water, that drop of water to those. And then if it's getting gummed up and dried up in your brush, you can just wash it out and then start Start with your new lines. Let's see what else we have. Looks like we got Courtney taking care of a few questions. Um, Courtney did get the bisque um, that can be added to your boxes. It's on Brenda's brush strokes and bisque. And then if you click on the, across the, there's some tabs across the top, and one of them is Brenda's Bisque Box. Um, and then when you get into there, I think it's at the bottom of that page or to the left of it. It kind of is going to depend on what kind of a device you're on to. You'll find um, bisque that you can add to your boxes. And you can add it right on there. And then um, you won't even have to message us. Cordy's got that figured out with the shipping um, that it won't add shipping. Um, she needs to work on cleaning that up more and organizing it more, but she hasn't had time because we've been shipping the boxes and there's a lot of, um, we had a lot of extra stuff going in the boxes, so it took took longer this time. So you guys had such fun shopping. And then if you, are you doing that again next time too? If they spend $50, they get the free shipping? Well, next Thursday? Yeah. So next Thursday with our um, shopping, buy it, add it to the box thing. If you spend an additional $50 on extras, then we will cover your um, extra shipping on your box. Or if it goes, if you need a second box. So she's got that all um, figured out right there. Courtney says it's a work in progress. Yeah, the whole everything's a work in progress because every day we you learn something new that you can do or can't do or doesn't work or or you can't get or <laughs> um, I'm hearing more that there's the sealer shortage more and more. So hopefully we they get that resolved here going into the holiday season. Someone even messaged that, um, like the brush on sealer is a shortage, which I hadn't heard that one before. Um, so we, Cordy hasn't mess checked messages yesterday or today. We're trying to get those bo the get the last of the boxes out. So if you had messaged us in the last last, um, probably yesterday or today, they um, haven't been answered, but she will get to them. Um, we're just trying to get the end of the boxes out for everybody. Here to yesterday and today, so. And everybody's tracking number should be in their inbox. Um, Cordy says everyone's tracking number should be in their inbox. Check your spam folder. 
Um, check your spam folder if you don't have it. We've had a few that have been going to their spam folders for some reason all of a sudden. Well, because I took the UPS. Oh, because um, we used UPS this time on a few of the, your bigger boxes. Um, so that may be why. I think I sent too many of them. The email servers think I'm spamming. Oh, so she says if she sends too many at once, the email server thinks she's spamming, and so they... State. They send it to the spam thing too. Then, so there's so many there's so many things that affect everything. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Cool, because we have questions. So, what's our first question? Uh, you don't know? <laughs> oh Lord, Courtney. I'm really tired. Yeah, my God. Did you answer? Is thin and shade okay to use with metallic? Um, nope. So we have a question. Is thin and shade okay to use metallic? Yep. Just don't, just don't use too much. You know, you don't want to use too much of this thin and shade. It's only going to take a drop, whatever you're using it for. And it's not, your, it's not going to dry as fast as what it dries without it. Also, that's the other thing with that. It, it keeps your paint open a little bit longer for like for blending colors. Um, so just be careful that you don't put your fingers in um, wet paint because it's going to take just a little bit longer to dry. You may notice that or and you may not even notice it. So what else we got? So that was Amanda. So then we have Crackpot Snowman. That was part of it. Yeah, we do. Courtney will take care of that. She'll message you on that. We'd probably, probably have to pour them. The little guys might be on the shelf, but the big guy is yeah, the big guy I have to pour for sure. Then Gail says, do you usually make sure you are brushing with the tip of your brush? Yeah, um, pretty much I would say I'm brushing with the tip of my brush. So now um, this one, um, now I've painted the two liners of the two frames. So my um, liners kind of getting built up with my silver. So if I was doing another one, I'd actually wash that out. Just because it's getting um, dried up in there and getting too thick. So if I was doing another one or I'm going to keep touching up, um, like I can't think I need to go here with my silver, I'd actually wash that out now. Because um, it just gets gummed up in there and dried up in there. And um, sometimes you just have to wash it out and get it fresh and clean. Yeah, I did that a couple times already tonight. Um, so the Cordy asked if I showed you how to load your brush. Um, so I'll hold it. Oh, hold it. Okay. Um, so usually, so now like even even my um, silver is getting a little thick now. So I'm going to, I would take my brush, dip it in the water, and there's just a drop of water in there. Um, hopefully you can see it drop on there. So now then I would stir that silver up, and that just like thins it back out again because it's been on here and drying. So then I, I have it stirred up. So then I, to load a liner, you want to load it so that the paint is in there. So I draw it through the paint and then I'm also turning it in my, between my index finger and my um, thumb. And then I kind of lift it as I get to the, to the close side to me and that helps put that point on that brush but it also loads the paint up into those bristles so you can go further with it so I'm just dragging it through the paint turning it and then when I get to the end I lift and that gets a nice point on my um, liner then for making a nice thin line so I'm just dragging it through it and turning it huh I'm kind of low okay let's do it again so I take that brush and I draw it through my silver and I'm turning it just turning it, kind of rolling it in between those two fingers as I'm dragging it through there. And that loads those bristles up with lots of paint. And you also get a nice point on that brush then. So hopefully you can see that. So that's not, that's how I load my liners. Um, so we have our silver done here. And I'm just going to touch up where I can see through it at all. And then anytime I go back... And put paint in that brush. Again, I just pull it through and turn it. Anytime I go back and put paint in, in that liner, I'm pulling it through there and turning it and lifting it to get that point on there. So I pull it and lift it. And I just want to touch up anywhere that I can see through here. Now I'm going to wash it out again. And then I usually pat it dry. And so now we have our silver done. So hopefully that helps. Let me
me see. We have some more questions. Let's see. How do you hold your brush? Okay, so I'm, I'm, I hold it just like I hold a, a pencil. Um, I'm holding further down on the end. I'm not way up here. I'm usually right, right down on the end where I can really control it. Um, and we're going to go to gold next so we can start with our gold. So I'm going to shake my gold up. So we're going to paint the gold on the back now. So I shake my gold up. I get my gold. And you'll probably be able to see the gold better than the silver when I'm loading it here. And your silver or your metallics, you usually got to shake those really well. Okay, so we have our gold on there now. So I'm going to hold it up here. So I, um, when I'm loading it, I probably hold back further just to keep my fingers out of the paint. Um, I'm just going to stir this up a little bit because that first batch wasn't stirred up well enough. Okay, so I'm just going to um, wash that out again so you can see how I load it. Now when I load that brush, I, I mean I do hold back further just because I don't want to get my fingers in the paint. But I'm going to draw that brush through that paint and then I'm turning it in those fingers. Whoop. And then I lift when I get to the end because that's going to put a nice point on it. So I'm turning it, pulling it towards me, and then I lift at the end. And that just loads those bristles up really nice and gets a nice point on them. So hopefully you we're able to see that. Um, and now we're just going to do our gold on the back here. And now I have to go back. And I'm going to do the same thing. Pull it through it and pull it towards me to load it. Huh? You did silver trim on the front and gold on the back. Um, let's see. Yeah, I did though. Yeah, I did. Um, silver and gold. Um, so you can see now the gold doesn't cover as nice as what the silver did, so it, it's taking more, even though it's loaded up in there. So Cordy's got a question. The tacky stuff that we used in the Maybach with the mushroom, what's that called? Um, tack it, I believe it's called. Um, it's usually at in your craft departments at Walmart or um, Joanne's or Hobby Lobby. It's just called um, so what's tack the it. Benefit over using that versus a permanent glue like you were talking. Oh, the tack it isn't permanent. That's the um, so you like can do either one. you can use either one. Yep. So like on the mushrooms, like I like the tack it because then. If I want to take them apart to store them for winter, um, they're easier to store probably in two pieces than one piece. And if water gets in, you can empty it out. Yep. So Cordy said if water gets in it, you can empty it out. So it's it's just a more, um, it's just non-permanent. I mean, you can, it's really hard to get the E6000 something apart when you use the E6000. So if you glue your mushroom together with E6000, the top and the bottom, it's probably not not going to come apart very easily. Um, or the tack it, like you can take it apart and then put it in a box, littler box, easier because it's in two pieces. So you can see I'm resting that um, one of those fingers on my ornament to be able to Kind of get nice straight lines. And the gold, even though I'm pulling it through there and kind of loading the brush, it, it doesn't go real far. Uh, far. It just It's not a good coverage thing. So we can do one, and then um, the other one I won't do. You guys don't have to watch me do two of them, but just that way you kind of have an idea how it... Um, how it goes on because like if you were doing this and never did it before you might think man that covers like crap what what am I doing wrong but you're really not doing anything wrong that's just kind of how the metallics tend to, to cover and they can take a couple coats of it and 
And the other thing with, with painting with a liner, you have to have a good liner. You can't just have a, a cheap, cheapo, um, off-brand, kids-type kids, kids type of liner. You, you do want a, a, a good liner. You'll, ha you'll have less frustration if you have a better liner. Uh, my favorite is the Silver Falcon, but they're very hard to get at this point. Um, I'm actually hoping he's at the show next next Friday. But if um, you don't have a good liner, you're, that's part of your frustration right there. So we have our one coat on, so I'm just going to keep lining these little guys out. So you guys that got your boxes, what did you what did you think? of your gourd and your um, silk screen. I mean, I thought it was a pretty cool new idea for us to do for you guys. So hopefully we can um, do, do more in the future too. Um, I know I was a little frustrated when I first used it to get the um, silk screen medium the right amount in the paint um, but I have that figured out so I'll be able to tell you guys what what to do so you won't have quite that learning curve that I had with it it just needs to be a lot lot thicker than you think it needs to be um, pretty much like a paste like a shoe paste if you ever had a, like a shoe paste um, it says like peanut butter usually when you're um, if you watch any of the videos that are out there but it's it would probably, I would say, more like cold peanut butter than warm peanut butter because it had to be pretty stiff to not bleed underneath the silk. Um, but that's really the biggest, the biggest thing. And after that, like the door is really open for all the different um, things you could do with it. So I wanted to um, actually check and see if that um, welcome autumn. If that would fit on the fin, fin the gnome of the little sign that he holds. I'm not sure if that's if it's too big to fit on there or not. But like even you could use that silk screen on like a little sign like that, or you could put it on his hat. Um, so you can wash them out after you're done using them, and um, if you're gentle with them, you can reuse them not forever, but um, you could you can reuse them. So that's kind of nice too. So you can see that the gold um, really doesn't cover as nice as the silver, uh, but it's just going to take a co another coat. So let's see what else we got. Paul's is in route. Denise Everyone, is looking yeah, forward. Is huh? Everyone's, everyone's in route. route except for a few, probably. Yeah. Yep, it was a lot of shipping this last week, so. Um, <laughs> Cody says the most she's shipped in a week, yeah. It was, you guys got a lot of extra stuff, so. Um, it's kind of been a long month making everything. And then those um, gourds, I actually had to pour, um, I poured from the pail because they took so much slip instead of from my pitcher. Um, so that was a little extra work too. I kind of like the smaller ones because I could just pour with the pitch, pit, my, I use a half gallon pitcher and um, fill the molds with those, with that instead of the nozzle. So you can see we're just painting out our little snowflake here and just it just takes time and you want to paint out your 
ridges as much as you can. Make sure you don't have the lumps in it. The metallics do tend to um, kind of get lumpy, especially the gold. I don't know why. Um, you could put glitter on this guy on the on the snowflake too if you wanted. After it was, um, if you didn't want to do the gold, you could just take the after you seal it, put on the brush on sealer, and then sprinkle your um, glitter on your snowflake too. So you could do that instead of the the gold. There's a ton of different things you could do. You could just paint it a um, say a blue color for the. I don't know if you like blue. You could leave them white. There's always more than one way to do just about everything in ceramic, so that's what's kind of nice. It can um, it's kind of adaptable to everyone's taste. Like if you didn't want the metallics, you wouldn't have to do it. Simple as that. If you don't like glitter, you don't have to do it. You know, do it. Do what makes you happy. Let's see. Oh, we got someone that did get a dragonfly, Courtney. Okay. So if, you, if anyone ever has trouble with your box, just send us a message and um, Courtney will take care of it right away. Um, if something, if like a, the box has been crashed and stuff's broke inside it, you will need to take pictures so she can file um, the claim with claim for it. Uh, make sure you take really good pictures how it's packaged and broke and all that because they want all that. But if you just message us, Courtney takes care of it because our stuff is insured. And that's part of our, part of what she does, so. Um, so we had a question if the gourd was as frustrating as the welcome stone. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, they kind of, um, well, actually the welcome stone, the, the stepping stone, want not, yeah, the the um the hummingbird one. Not so much that the rock was okay. That was frustrating too because I had to <clears throat> excuse me put foam after they were um, dumped out so that they didn't collapse. They wanted to collapse that welcome rock with the for the inserts, um, but that um, the hummingbird one actually wanted to crack when it was fired. So that was that was a bigger problem. Uh, Cordy still don't like it. Uh, the um the gourd the gourd wasn't a problem. It's just that it was it's easier to lift a half gallon pitcher of slip than a um than like a two gallon bucket of slip. So I mean they weren't a problem. It just was a little more a little more muscle work. So. Um, they were fairly easy to clean too. So. So this guy would just need now um, an another layer of the gold because you can see the white through it. Uh, but I, I don't need to like sit and do that for you guys to see that. But if, if you were doing, when you're doing yours, you're probably going to need to do two coats. I'm going to want to just sit here and paint gold all night. You guys will be bored to death. Uh, but you would have to go back and add uh, probably a second coat just because the gold does not cover in that first coat. So you, you do want it like solid gold coverage so you'll like nine chances out of ten need to do two coats um, so don't be surprised that you have to do that um, so I'll just leave it at that and and then the other one you would do the same thing on but we don't need to um, just sit here and paint gold tonight so we're not going to do that so if you have your gold on from there we are going to wash out our brush now And our next number is to paint our eyes. Oh, and we got the gold on the snowflakes and the mittens, too. So I kind of forgot about that. So we got gold on our mittens, so we'll do that. Which I would have washed that brush out anyway because it was kind of getting clogged up. So we'll put our trim on our mittens. And again, I'm just going to hold my piece and nice and tight. Rest my painting hand on it. And just trim out our little um, 
mittens here so we have the gold on the front and the back. And it looks like I forgot to paint the stem next last week on our holly, so we'll have to do that. So the gold does um, cover a little bit better on the darker color here, as you can see, versus the white. So if you wanted, you could actually go with a maybe a brown first on your snowflake and then go with your gold. Just, just for better coverage, kind of like we do with our red usually. So we're just going to paint out our trim on our mittens. And I'm just using that same liner. Is this a liner we have, Courtney, or is this one that you, this that one that... Yeah, you have. I have that one. Okay, the 4585. Because it's a little bit longer of a liner. Um, I, I tend to like the longer liners. You can get more of a point on them. Um, but we'll try to get silver falcons to offer, but that's not shop. So, Courtney said um, when we go to the show, we'll try to get some silver falcons to offer to you guys, but it's a um, shot in the dark. I, I don't know if he's going to be there, and then um, they could. I did reach out to him. Um, we've tried calling him off and on and haven't gotten through ever. Um, so, if we can get some, we'll get some. Um, I know we did the year before. Yeah, Cordy thinks he retired. I don't, I don't think he's going to be there either, but we'll see. Maybe someone else will be there representing them. So we're just putting our little gold lines on our mittens here. Um, this four five nine, this four five eight five is is a, is a good liner too. I mean, our other liners are pretty good liners. Um, I just tend to really really like the silver falcon ones. Um, but this one's um, is is decent too. It's just that a lot of people don't like the longer um, bristles on a, on a liner, but I, I do. Once you, once you use them and get used to it, you'll like it just because you, you can get a really nice point. I think a nicer point on those longer liners. But it, it takes getting used to, that's for sure. Um, best thing is to just get yourself one or two and just practice. Even if it's on a piece of paper. So I just find I can get um, finer lines with the longer liner. I don't know why, but that's... We have our gold on both of our snow people here, so I'm wash up my brush. And I actually have to go back to my Christmas green and do my um, stem on my holly. I missed that last week, the way it looks. So we'll touch that up here quick. And then you want to make sure you clean your brushes out really well, too. That's really important, with especially with your liners. It's important with all your brushes, but especially those liners. Um, that Harold's brush pad is really good. You can run that brush that your brush back and forth across that. It's that little plastic blue pad, and we carry that too. Um, it just really gets that crud that gets up close to the ferrule, and it cleans it right out. Uh huh. Stuff that goes to the hummingbird. Um, mean to buy it or what? Yeah, we were going to buy it until we were miserable. 
Yeah, I don't think Cordy's gonna let me buy any nope. stepping stones anytime nope. soon, you guys. All of it. <laughs> uh, maybe I can sneak one in for the classroom, but I know she ain't gonna that ain't happening for the box. No. I don't want them at all. <laughs> she don't want them at all. I I would seriously just suck them up that way. <laughs> no, there's gotta be a way around it. It's got just a matter of finding what the secret is. I don't want to know the secret. Kind of like pouring a, a wreath. A wreath is another thing you kind of... Kind of yeah. tricky, too. Some things you just walk away from it. Uh, Cordy says some things you walk away for it. Uh, I like to like meet it head on and... No. Break it down. We can go buy one from somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we got our um, green done on our holly here. and Just touch the holly up a little bit. Wash my brush out. And then we painted our eyes black, brown, and our blue. So we'll get a little pile of black because mine's been out here for a while. And then we need some white. OS 431. And then our medium blue, which is OS 457. Alrighty. So now for my um, eyes, I do like to dip in that water, and so you can see there's, hopefully you can see there's just a drop of water on the end of that brush, and I'm going to stir that up a little bit. And that'll help that paint flow better off of that brush. You don't want it too thin so that it runs like water, but it's just a little bit thinner than the paint. So now I'm just going to load that by drawing it through it and turning it and lifting at the end so I have a nice point on my brush. So you can see we've got a nice point on there. So we'll come and fill in the black on this eye. See Elizabeth. Huh? Elizabeth's husband picked up the Harold brush pad. He used it as a scrubby. Oh, are we going to use it as a scrubby? Well, it probably work as a good scrubby, too. <laughs> uh, he put it back on there. So yeah. Good. I bet it's probably a good scrubby. It's like touching gold. Don't touch it. Huh? Yeah, I got that on there before already. Sometimes you get paint everywhere. I'm just filling in his eyes with the black. Having trouble seeing the tip of that brush tonight. Because we're tired. Because we're tired. Yeah, like I can't see the the end of it. I'm ready for bed. <laughs> no, I'm spending the night at Courtney's tonight since I don't have a vehicle to get back home with. I don't know if I'm sleeping on a airbed. Airbed or a sofa bed. Airbed. You can test it out. Oh, I get to test it out? Well, those are pretty decent. It's a double decker. Oh, a double decker? Mm -hmm. well, that's, I think so. That's good because old people can't get up off the floor no more. We're going to find out. <laughs> oh, wow. Thanks a lot. Uh, We've never used it. Oh. Uh, we had a double, we had double decker one, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Your cat got the warm one. Now we're going to paint her eyes black. Ooh. I'm actually not liking this brush for this. One? Yeah, because there's like a little loose hair on the end of this one. The same brush or different brush? Um, no, look in the, I should have a little one in the... There should be one here, one of the little black ones. I think we have a brush order that's supposed to come any day, too. You don't like five of that brush. Which one? The one you're using. Yeah, this one's got a little odd hair on it, end of it, though. I'll have to take the scissors after it. Your 
What's the one? What am I missing, maybe? The laundry one. She says I got five of them here, but, um... Painters like brushes, right? So I kind of got her eyes all gobbed up here because of this little hair that's sticking out of this thing. Those are all shorter liners. I know, this one's not. This one I'm gonna have to take the. <clears throat> I gotta take the. Um. This is that. No. The mini majestic one. Do you have these? If they want this one now that you gave it to me. I love it, but I have more coming. Um, we have more of this so I switched now to this. Um. 20 O Royal Light and Light Nickel Mini Majestic Liner. It's a little shorter handle. Um, that other one just had a little loose hair on the end of it. That or I just can't see tonight. We'll see which problem it really is. It's probably a seeing problem. So sometimes you got to touch eyes up. Um, sometimes you, if I have a day like that when I'm doing eyes, like I'll just let them to another day. <laughs> but we can't do that. We're on the on the camera, so. so this is the 404595 one. We switched to that one because that other one seemed to have a hair in it, too. I'm guessing it's the eyeballs, you guys. I don't think it's the brush, then. So if I have troubles with eyes, um, like, it's it's been a long week for us. It's been a terrible <laughs> Yeah, so if I'm doing trouble eyes, like I'll I'll let them till tomorrow. Like I wouldn't just keep at it, but we're on the show here, so we'll keep at it because that's looking kind of ugly. But we can touch them up, but sometimes if you you know if you're you, you want to do eyes and little dainty things like that when your eyes are like really fresh and you're not tired and. Because that does make a big difference. All right, so I'll have to touch up my white here because I got black all over. But normally I would um, just wait till another day. But it's been a long week with firing and pouring and shipping and. So tonight's an off night for eyes, the way it looks. But we do have the eye video. You can always go go and look at that. Um, Cordy can share that link probably for you. It's a piggy bank eyes, but it's basically this this same eye. Because once it seems like once I start having trouble with them, like that's it's just done for for the day. <laughs> uh, we'll touch them up here a little bit, and maybe we can get one set that looks halfway decent. You put your seventy-fifth video on YouTube. Oh, Cordy says we have our 75th video on YouTube. That's pretty cool. That's crazy. Um, so we're getting these guys touched up. Hers looked the worst here. I don't know what happened with hers. Um, so Cordy does get the videos on YouTube after we are done on Thursdays. If it's not on there, um, it's probably a kind of a crappy one from when we first started and whatnot. Yeah. So let's see if we can get her straightened out here. Um, so it's not it's not always easy for for painting, even for me. Like sometimes, if you're just really having a really bad day, just put it aside and come back to it another day, or um, go to go to base coating or doing something that's easier that you're not frustrated with. Some days it's it's just like that. Like, I, I painted all afternoon, so I'm sure that didn't help here today with doing the eyes tonight. I 
Okay, well, she's looking a little better anyway. And he looks a little better. And I'm going to add a little, like three little black lines to their little rust colored carrots here, just so that just gives them a little bit of shape, shape as well. Huh? We didn't have time to bake none. We should have just went to the bakery. Okay, so from there we are going to go to our. Um, so if you're having trouble like that, you could just put the white, the little white, the comma and the I and a dot and call it good. We'll go ahead here and try to put our white in and see what happens tonight. So we'll do our little crescent of white on the bottom half of the eye. It's kind of like the moon laying on its side. What's that Wonder ice cream shop that's around the corner? Never been there. So we're putting our little crescent or half quarter moon in the bottom of each eye there with the white. And now we can go to our blue. I tend to like to use blue on the eyes and we'll put in another little crescent of blue right above our white. Do that in both eyes. Um, these are really little eyes too, so if you have to just do a black dot, black with the white dot, there's nothing wrong with that. Keep it simple. I'll wash up my brush, and I'll come back and do black right over the up to my blue just to make sure it's got a nice shape to it. And this one's looking a little crazy over here. <clears throat> so Courtney shared the koi pond on the story yesterday, but she dumped all the food in at one time. Well, how do you do it? They get handfuls oh. kind of in a bunch, you know, mm. in the different areas so that... Um, so that they're not all like fighting on top of each other. It was a brawl, then. Um, they survived. <clears throat> yeah, they survived. Excuse me, I'm going to take a drink. So usually, like, she jumped the whole container in at once, kind of in one pile. I throw handfuls in in different areas so they're not all knocking into each other. And then um, the water's really green because I haven't had time to deal with my pond um, all last year or this year, so... That's why the water is green. So now we're going to put our little white commas in the black area. It's just, it's just a little bitty comma. And we'll do that on the like the one o'clock on each eye. Yeah, the, the my backyard looks horrible. Um, so we're doing our comma in, in her eyes now. Um, need to get some days off scheduled in the program here so I can get it back under control because it's looking pretty pretty rough. But maybe next year. So hers are a little bit bigger but that's okay. And now I'll put just a little white dot at the top of his commas. Um, hers I'm not going to because hers are already kind of big. So there we have our little eyeballs done. Let's see. Well, maybe I will. Maybe that'll make hers look better. She's just been frust. She's been a um, hard one all night here. His were a lot easier than hers, and I don't know why, but. Ooh, that's really ugly now. She looks like Oh, yeah, she's. <laughs> it's like there's something wrong. It's right. We'll let that dry and I'll have to fix that one. So that's how that goes. That's just how it is. It's a um, what to do and what not to do. Huh? What to, what to and, and what not, not to do. do. Okay, so we have to um, touch up our red on here. And let's see, we have our real red. She doesn't look happy at all. She doesn't look happy at all. She looks like she's possessed by the devil. <laughs> Cordy could make those kind of eyes. 
We'll have to get real red for next time. Oh, I keep That's okay. I just need a drop to cover up the whatever I got on his little head here. So we're just going back now and touching up anything that needs touching up. So you want to touch stuff up if it needs touching up. Looks like our white needs some touching up. I'll need, um, Cordy, some clean water and a sponge. Um, yeah, we're going to antique these guys. There's probably one on the cart. Um, so I have to touch up my brown where I got my fingers and all the brown paint here earlier tonight. No, I lost my thing. So I'm just touching up anywhere is where I got brown. Look, I even got brown on the string. Lord, good grief. So some days it's like that. So I think we had put the string in this one originally right away so you guys could see how to do that. Um, and of course, hers is looking kind of ugly here. Let's see if we can fix this eyeball yet. So... I think we'll just put some black back on it. So usually I just paint right back over it and kind of start over. Otherwise you're just battling it forever. So we'll let that dry for a second. And Courtney brought me a sponge and water for our antiquing. Oh um, no, that's good. Let's see if we can get some blue back in there now. Let me put some white back in first. Like I said, when I have trouble like that with the eye, I'll just actually let them sit until the next day. Because usually it's just not meant to be that day. So we got our white, our white in. Now we'll go get some blue. We'll wash that out and then we'll go back to our black and touch that up just a little bit. Just really having trouble seeing the end of the brush here tonight, you guys. All right, we'll wash that out. Go back to our white and see if we can get a little comma in there. Well, that's better than it was. And we'll put a little dot at the top. All right, now she ain't quite as possessed. So then we also have to brush our, we already did the rust on the noses before. We're going to make a little um, blush with our azalea. So I just take our azalea OS559. And I'm just going to make a little puddle of that. It's just, oh, way too much. Just a little drop really is all you need. And I'm going to go into my water and pull just a little bit of my azalea way over to the side. So you can see you only, you only need like a drop, literally. And I'm thinning it out um, with my water so it kind of looks like a watercolor. I'll do it over because it looked like I had some black in the brush yet. So we get our little water and pull it over to this side so now it's a little pinker. So I can actually see through my azalea on my foil. I can see the foil through it. And then I usually touch my paper towel and then I can come and touch her cheeks and just blush it a little bit. And if you have um, chalk, you can use chalk. That works well too. Um, we haven't we had chalk the first year, and I know a lot of you guys are new, so you probably don't have the chalk. Um, so I usually just do this little watercolor, or you can dry brush it on, too, if you'd rather do that. And give him just a touch, too. He's got those cold, rosy cheeks. Okay, wash our brush out. Then, let's see, we are going to, 
At this point, then I seal them with a um, the satin sealer. And we're at Cordy's house, so we're not going to do that. But I do, did seal them with the satin sealer before I antique them because then they won't get as dark. Um, however, I don't want to stink Courtney's house up with satin sealer, so we're not actually going to do that. Um, but um, when I did when I did these, I actually sealed them with the satin sealer. Um, no, because they're going to stink even when you bring them back in. It's okay. Um, so we're not going to do that. Um, so you'll probably notice the difference that they'll be a little bit darker than um, what the finished ones are. So we're going to take our black brown, which is our OS473. And I usually have this mixed in a little container at the classroom. Um, but you can mix it right here on your foil. And I'm going to take a round nylon brush. And I'm going to have um, water in my container and I have my sponge and I'm going to wet my sponge and wring it out so it's ready. So you want to do about a 50-50 mixture of water to paint. So I have my, um, and like I said, I usually do it in a little container, but I'm we can do it right here on the foil. So I'm going to just add about the same amount of water as I have paint here and mix that up. You want it pretty thin. Okay, so that's mixed up. Get a little more. And now I'm gonna, um, so I would have done my second coat of my gold on here too, but I didn't do that. So I'm gonna brush this on. And if it's too thick, you can dip in your water again. And we're just going to brush it on the back. And I'm going to take my damp sponge and wipe it off. And you can have them as white or as brown as you want them. Now we'll just move around to the side and to the front. So it's just like your color wash for when you're um, going to dry brush like we did with the blue. It's the same, kind of the same, I don't know, the same mixture really. And I usually do like a three by three area. I wouldn't do the whole thing and then um, do it the front and the back because it would dry on you and you wouldn't be able to wipe it off at all. I'll take my sponge now and wipe it. And then you can wring it out and then you can wipe more. So this one is going to be, it's going to be darker just because I, I didn't seal it before I wiped it, but it'll be pretty close. It looks like I missed here. So you can see it darkens all of the colors. And then you just want it even kind of on the front and the back as far as how much brown or how much white there is. And your sides, don't forget your sides. So that looks pretty good. I don't know if I had a, one of my stands here, I would sit it on my stand, but I don't. So I'm just going to lay it on the table. So now we can do him. And I need another little puddle of paint, which is our black brown again. And I didn't want to use black because I didn't want the, I just didn't want it that dark. I'm going to dip my water into my pile here. And you can actually make this in a little container if you want. And then as long as you have a cover on it, it'll last till the next time that you're using it. 
It's about 50% paint and 50% water. Okay, we'll go on the back. Now he, his um, snowflake isn't done with the gold, but that's okay. You can go back and do it later too. I didn't want to paint gold all night and you guys would get bored and leave us. And then you just take your sponge and wipe it again. You can turn it to a new area to wipe more and you, then you can wring out your sponge. And if you have clean water, it'll um, be whiter too. That you have a couple, you could even have like two, two pots of water. And now we'll come to the front. So you could you could, you wouldn't even have to use brown. You could have used like a navy blue if you wanted. You could use um, the silvers or the golds. It, you can antique with any whatever you want to antique with. Um, they used to make antiquing mixtures. Um, there's a few of them out there yet. Um, I think Donna's maybe has some and Doc Holiday and um, Kimple. So we're just covering our whole piece with our brown getting in all the little cracks and then I'm just going to wipe again and I just want to let the brown down in the crevices and that's that's antiquing there there's that's all antiquing is it's just a process of kind of staining it um, darkening it So it's actually um, just like color washing when we color wash we just do it that before and then we dry brush on top of that where now we're we painted it and we're doing it after and it's called antiquing and it does it does darken the colors a little bit as you can see like the red is darker so it's not like the true red that it was when we painted it on there or even the green um, so you wouldn't want to do this with your string on there either you'd want to wait with that but we had um, put that one in to show you guys earlier because um, some of you worked ahead so I'm trying to get a little bit out of down from down in there so you can see he's, he is a little bit darker and that's because he wasn't sealed first. Um, so you, you don't have to seal them first. That was just another way to do it. Um, just to show you that there's more than one way to do things, even antiquing. Um, you can seal it first and then antique it, or you can antique it and then seal it later, which we would still seal this. But it just helps your piece from getting quite so dark if you seal it first. So there we go. We have our little pieces antiqued. Um, I'm gonna wipe. So it is kind of messy with your hands. So I can show you. So mine that were sealed first. You can see it, it is. It's not as. It's not as dark as this one that wasn't sealed first. So that's the diff main difference. So um, from there we would take and seal them with our sealer again. Actually, I dry brushed the white a little bit more, so we can do that too, just to bring the white back out a little bit. So we'll get our white OS 431 white. And we're just going to dry brush them a little bit just to bring the white back out. And I'm just using a round brush. This is a size 10 um, or bristle brush. And then I'm just going to dry brush on here a little bit just to kind of bring that white back up so it's whiter again. More on just on the outside snow snow part of it I guess you could say. And you wouldn't have to do this. This is just just something I did on these guys. I mean it's just a little bit just because I didn't want my snow really brown. And we'll 
do this one a little bit quick. And then don't put your strings in until you're done. We just happen to have this one in again, like I said, because we showed you at the beginning uh, when the boxes first came what to do in case someone worked ahead. Put a little on our broom like our broom got in the snow. Okay, then I would actually seal that, let them dry and seal them again. And I use satin so they have a little bit of a shine to them like it's wet icy snow. And from there we would paint on our, um, our snow and our glitter according we need out of the cart. So in your box, a little, you had a little container of snow and glitter. Um, so you can put that on after you have it sealed. Um, so you had your strings in your box also. So this was included as part of your box. And then the little container of glitter. And then some snow. Um, so you can use a, the palette knife. You guys had a palette knife in one of your boxes. You can... Um, yeah, my container was open, so it's a little dry, but there's plenty here. So you just put the snow. Um, I put mine around her little face here. Um, so you do want to use your snow whenever you guys get snow, because that does dry out after a while in those little containers. But that one was open. Um, this one's been open, so that's why it's dry. But you left it open. Oh, I left it open? Yeah, the container top of that. Oh. We'll just put our little snow around here like she's got little fur on her, um, around her little face on her hood. Let's see, where else did I put it? I also put a little bit on our um, ornament and then a little bit up on our um, holly here. Kind of bring this one around, get some on the berries. So if you don't want to put snow on, you don't have to put snow on. You don't want to put glitter on, you don't have to put glitter on. We're, whatever you guys want to do, that's whatever makes you happy. That's what we're happy with. Um, you could use a brush too to do this, but I usually tend to like to use the palette knife. Let's see, I put a little bit down here. A little bit on there yet. And then you can just take your little glitter container and sprinkle your glitter on. And I'm just putting it right on the snow areas. Woo, half the container went there. We'll dump that back in. That just kind of adds a lot of little sparkle to her. Okay, so there she is all snowed up. Let's see, he's got some on his um, broom here. And a little bit on the ornament over here. And a little bit on his hat. Well, let's put a little bit on his broom down there too. You can see it's pretty, it's whatever you want to do. And then we'll sprinkle some glitter on. I'll need the wire, Courtney, and the glue. And you can always save your leftover glitter. We always tend to send more than you need, but there he is looking all cute too. We'll close this stuff up this time, although it's already dried out. Um, so you can just save your little glitters. Looks like I got snow in my glitter here now. Okay, then for your ornament, um, and I'm and that, then actually we I put snow on your blue ones also, so you can do that too. Um, so I'm going to use one of the other ornaments so where the snow is dried. Otherwise, I'll have my fingers in the snow and I'll have snow all over the ornament. So to put your 
um, strings on, if you had a piece of wire in your um, box. So that's what we use for that. And then you'll need some E6000 glue or some hot glue. So I'll put them up. You know, I see I already put my finger in the glue in the snow. So we'll take our take your um, satin rat tail ribbon, it's called. Which now I got brown all over them too. I don't know what's where are those browns coming from tonight. <laughs> I'm a hot mess here tonight. Good grief. Oh my god. Actually, let's back up. We're gonna actually take and stick this through the hole first. We're a hot mess, you guys. I got glue and snow and glitter everywhere. All right. So I have the open end up here, and then I have my closed end down here, and sometimes it's like that. No wonder Jason don't want glitter here. <laughs> you should see the floor. You should see the floor, huh? Yeah. Alright, so now we're going to take and put our rat tail through there. So hopefully you can see this now. We have our wire through our hole, and it's coming out the bottom with the round part. And I have my string inside there. Now I'm going to um, take... I think they all got brown on at this point. Oh my god, there's brown everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're gonna yeah, see now it's got brown on it. I, I don't know where all the brown's coming from. Ew, it's coming from you. I don't know. Well anyway, so we're gonna put it through there. We're gonna tie a little knot in there. And then I'm gonna slide that knot down to the end so the brown will be inside the ornament anyway. Um so there so we have our wire through it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, blue blue glitter would be pretty too. We could have purple, we could have glitter, we have the whole place glittered up. So I have my wire through it with the open end on top, my loop down on the bottom, and then my string is through it. Next we're going to add some E6000 to this hot mess. And I'm going to just put a little dab of that on the end of my um, knot there. And it doesn't take much. So now I'm going to pull my cord through my, and I'm holding that knot so I'm not getting E6000 all over, so it's really a mess. Once it gets in there, I can let it go, and I'm just going to pull this through now, maybe, because we changed string. These are the wrong, it's probably going to be a, a snug fit. Um, your guys' holes are bigger, but the, these weren't on these because these were made earlier. Because um, we had different string and we couldn't get it, so you just pull it, pull it through your hole till it's snug. So now that is all there is to making your hangers. Um, and then you, if you want, you can save this because we do use um, the wire occasionally for things like that, and it can just come in handy for stuff. Um, so that is all there is to making your um, your cords and your loops. We can do one more so you can see it again because that's probably the most confusing part of the the deal. So let's see if we got one that ain't all brown here. So I'm going to put my wire through again just so you can see it. It comes through the bottom. I have my loop down here. And I moved up. Put your Put your cord, your ribbon through it. Tie it into a knot. And then kind of push your knot down to the end. Put a little squeeze of E6000 or hot glue on there, whatever you're using. Hold your knot. Pull your ribbon up inside your ornament. Then you can let it go and then you can pull it through till it's snug up to your knot. And then just take your wire out. And then your hanger is all done. So that's really all there is, is to it. Um, I, I really like the the string hangers better than putting like the wire loops that you can put in there because those things don't always stay in. Um, so that's kind of why I tend to use the string or the ribbon. Um, so that's all there is to that. Put your cap back on your gun, your glue. And then we can show you the finished ornaments and then we can give you our sneak peek for September once I clean some of this off here a little bit. So this was our July box. 
Um, I think we have a couple of them yet if anyone's interested. It should be on Renda's Brushstrokes and Bisque.com. Cordy says we have just a handful left. Um, so these were our ornaments for that box. If anyone wants extra ornaments yet, we still, I poured a bunch of extra ones. Um, so we do have those extra yet. Um, so this was our July box, which we're finished up tonight now. So I hope you guys enjoyed the box. Um, it was a lot of fun to do. You learned three different techniques, antiquing, color washing, and dry brushing, and then um, base coating with some dry brushing and painting. Um, so it's a good, um, great beginner's box, actually, to learn three different things. Um, and you also got the instructions, your inventory sheet, and then a nylon painting brush. I think it was this 10, wasn't it? By oh, five. So you also you also got a nylon painting brush. I don't know if it was, was this one, but you got one of these in your box. Um, August and uh, all the way through December, you'll be getting a different nylon painting brush. Um, so that's your July box. So let's put that aside quick. Um, then just show you your August box quick. So this is the gourd and the dragonfly, and then we're doing silk screening and then a new background technique, and that's what we're shipping now. You can get that yet on Brenda's Brushstrokes and Bist.com. And then if Cordy wants to give me the box, we will be unveiling and opening um, that box up next week. We always have a nice little quote on the top that Courtney always finds, and it's wrapped up kind of like a package. So we'll unbox this next week, and you'll get to see your complete August box. Then we need our September pieces, Courtney. So our September box needs a name. Drum roll. Drum roll. Courtney says, are you ready? Um, oh, God. She's, <coughs> she's turning them upside down. Here they come. Da-dum, 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 <coughs> da-dum. Woo-hoo, here they are. Any guesses? So we have a little girl ghost and a little boy pumpkin, and they're both from Donna's. So this is the September box. Um, they need a little touching up yet. She's going to get glitter on her um, mask, and she's going to get a little black bow, bow or ribbon here yet. Um... I don't know if he's going to get any glitter, but she, she'll get some glitter on there and, our, and a bow. Um, so this is our September box that's coming. Um, it, Courtney has it listed if you're a one-time purchaser, do you? I have like a shop. It's not a finish. They can um, order from it, but not all the pictures are um, So the pictures aren't all there, but Courtney does have it on Brenda's Brush Tokes and Bisque if you're a one-time um, buyer. Um, these guys do need a little touching up because I was I painted them this afternoon. And I was trying a, a rush to get them done, um, and then um, this comes as a there's a whole set with this piece. Um, there's a witch, there's a kissing couple, there's a girl rolling a pumpkin, a boy rolling a pumpkin, um, the three cats, eight crows, and I'm. Um, oh, a corn stalk with a cat on top, and then um, there's also a fence, and we didn't order that fence, but I do have fences, so I will be digging that fence out um, this week. Courtney has a, the, I don't know, there's a lot of shine. Um, so it's ba basically this whole bottom set. So she's pointing, i got to move it up. Um, so we have, we have all these pieces. I think we I can probably dig out some pumpkins too, but we have the crows. The set of eight crows, the set of three kittens, um, the corn stalk with the kittens. We have the witch, um, the scarecrow, we'll um, so um, this girl and this boy, um, this kissing couple. We have those. Cordy will be able, you'll, if you're a one-time buyer or anybody, you'll be able to go on to Brenda's Brushstrokes and Bisque and add it. If you're a subscriber, you can add it to your box without the shipping. Um, she's got it set up to do that. Um, um, just not yet, so she's got to fin finish it and get the, pic the pictures on it. But we do have all the pieces. I'll dig out a fence. I think we have more of a cedar fence. And then we do have some separate little pumpkins. I can probably dig those out, too. Um, so it's this girl, this boy. Actually, that's a boy, a girl. The kissing couple. The witch. The scarecrow boy. And then these are the two um, box pieces. So we have all of that for you guys for... Um, spooky Little Tots, that's a good name. Um, so Courtney will 
get you guys taken care of. So we'll have that for extra bis next week when we are doing our after show. Um, but these two are your pieces for your September box. So we're we're pretty fun to have them. No new colors. Um, it's all dry brushed. They're a little um, bit bigger than the monsters, but I think we could maybe mix them. Well, Courtney thinks you could mix, mix them with the monsters we had last year, but these guys are They're just a little, a little bit, bit bigger, bigger. yeah. Um, as far as scale wise, so it looks like we got lot, lots of hearts. So it looks like you guys are liking them. We were we weren't a hundred percent sure because the Donna stuff is a little more dated looking, but I think they they look okay. Um, her eyes need a little little work yet, but I didn't. Like I said, it's been a long day and a long week with shipping the boxes, but they're looking pretty good. So hopefully you guys like it and. And do we party. do a Halloween party. Well, we yeah. did one last year, didn't we? And we had some giveaways and stuff. So we'll probably have a Halloween party that that um, Thursday of Halloween when we're can piece, we're sure painting. Yep, yeah, maybe we can paint the witch. Can you do that in one Um, yeah, they're pretty easy. Okay. I mean, I can make her pretty easy. Okay. Oh, Helen won the pumpkins last year. All right. So yeah, we'll we'll have a Halloween party again. And then next Thursday, we'll have an after party for extra bisque and probably some giveaways and some sales. And um, I think we're adding some um, glitter to the to, to the order, uh, like the Halloween glitter and some Christmas glitter. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the class tonight and for the July box. And we'll get to our August box next month, which is going to be a great fun with the silk screens. Can't wait to do that with you guys. It's really going to open a lot of doors for things that we can do as well and then we'll I'm pouring away on these guys we have three of the witch molds because I figured the witch would be really um, popular with you guys so hopefully you like all the pieces and, and everybody should have their August um, Cordy says everyone should have your August tracking number um, um, so we'll we'll have a hope you guys have a great week and we will catch you next week and we'll open our August box and get going with our silk, silk screening. So that should be a lot of fun. So thank you guys for joining us. We really appreciate you. And thank you so much. Good night.